Happy whatever time of day this is when you're watching. I'm Kim Horcher, and in today's Daily Fix, we have a Halo Infinite release date, more from the Activision Blizzard lawsuit, and Ubisoft is working on a theme park, and it's probably not just Assassin's Creed, jump off a building, the ride. Graphics, please. <laughs> You wanted a Halo Infinite date during the Gamescom Xbox Showcase? I wanted that too, but we have it! Now, December 8th. December 8th is not just National Brownie Day, it's officially Halo Infinite release day for campaign and multiplayer modes. Head creative for Halo Infinite Joseph Staten confirmed the news after several sources previously leaked the information during Gamescom's opening night live stream. To celebrate Halo's 20th anniversary, Xbox and 343 Industries also showed off a very aesthetically pleasing Halo Infinite Limited Edition Elite Series 2 controller and a separate Limited Edition Xbox Series X Halo Infinite bundle, including its own custom-designed console and controller, complete with Cortana Blue top vent and custom Halo sounds. You can pre-order both now, before their November 15th release. The Elite controller will run you $199.99, while the Series X is going for $549.99. We don't have dates for Halo Infinite's co-op and Forge modes just yet, but we do know the game is designed to evolve over time. Pre-orders for Halo Infinite are live now. The lawsuit against Activision Blizzard alleging discrimination and harassment is getting expanded to include contractors, and there are new claims the game publisher destroyed or withheld documents related to the case. Axios first reported on the updated lawsuit, with California's Department of Fair Employment and Housing adding a new 11th clause of action to the lawsuit, stating, quote, documents and records have not been maintained as required by law, and that, quote, documents related to investigations and complaints were shredded by human resource personnel and emails are deleted 30 days after an employee's separation. Activision's HR department has been singled out by employees who said HR did little to address accusations of abuse and harassment as they happened. Activision and Blizzard employees were quick to talk about their experiences regarding this on Twitter, like Jessica Gonzalez, a tech analyst at Blizzard, who tweeted, quote, HR destroyed the documents related to the lawsuit, which means the fine for doing so was less than the penalty for what it was. Shame on HR. Time to unionize. I will be screaming this from the hilltops now. Feels so gross working here right now. An Activision Blizzard spokesperson got back to IGN, explicitly denying several allegations, including document shredding by the California DFEH. You can read further in depth on this story on IGN, and we will update the story as it develops. And lastly, if you love video games and theme parks, and Super Nintendo World at Universal Studios is not exactly what you want because you like Ubisoft, then good news, we have the exact specific thing you want because Ubisoft is making moves to expand into a fully-fledged Ubisoft theme park. Ubisoft's location-based entertainment manager, Mathilde Brezen, told Theme Park Insider, quote, Video games and themed parks have a lot more in common than we think. We are excited to join forces with Storyland to continue exploring the potential for synergies and design immersive, innovative, and unforgettable experiences based on our catalog of worlds. The maker of Assassin's Creed, Far Cry, Rabbids, and the never-ending Just Dance stage at E3 is partnering with Storyland Studios, a design firm whose website showed me they previously worked on such things as the Hogwarts Express at Universal Orlando, the Batman Arkham Knight Batmobile that appeared at E3, extensive Legoland and Lego projects, a Science of Star Wars exhibit, and several other permanent and temporary IP-based installations. I didn't see any thrill rides, but in terms of theming and atmosphere elements, including video games, their resume looks pretty solid. Theme Park Insider reports the concepts will be primarily indoor and capable of being realized in multiple locations around the world, which immediately reminds me of the Nickelodeon theme parks inside malls. So does that mean no Far Cry gyrocopter attacks? 
And that was your gaming fix for today. I'm Kim Horcher and thanks for watching. Now that you're all caught up on the news, check out IGN's ongoing Gamescom coverage. Download the IGN app on all your devices and for all things, everything else, IGN.com. Candidates, are you ready? Yes, ma'am. I can't hear you.